Why does nafs exist in the first place? The desire nature in an individual is called nafs. It is like a horizon. It looks as if it is just there, maybe close by. And if you rush, you can reach it within a short time. But you will never reach it even after a long time. You will find that it has again receded back and the distance remains the same. Nafs is the neurotic state of mind. Just look inside. Nafs is the neurotic state of mind. Just look inside yourself and you will always find nafs existing there. Why does nafs exist at all? What is the reason for its existence in the first place? Nafs refers to lower desires, the desire nature. As such as you are, you are afraid of inner emptiness. So much so that the inner seems almost like a death, a kind of death. Look within and there is emptiness and nothing else. A silence, an eternal silence, never disturbed. Not even a ripple arises there. Not, e not even you are there. Because you are noisy, you are crowd, you are full of mind. At the innermost core of your being, there is pure emptiness. And that creates fear. One wants to fill it with something, but one does not know what to fill it with. One wants to stuff it with something and wants to become something so that this emptiness can be dropped. That is the reason nafs exist, because of that emptiness and the desire to fill it. It is because of the fear of innermost emptiness that you go on stuffing yourself. You may have washed it. When you are feeling empty, you start eating more. When you are feeling very lonely, you start eating. Those who feel lonely, they eat more. When you are missing your beloved or your lover, you start eating too much because there is an emptiness. You stuff yourself. You just want to have a feeling of fullness within, but no food goes into your inner emptiness. Food stuffs your stomach and it is destructive to your body if you eat too much. But still you will remain empty. Somebody becomes a food addict. Next one becomes a power addict. Someone becomes money addict. They all are addictions. These are all real drugs. Money, power, food. The drugs like marijuana, LSD, they are nothing compared to money, power, they are really destructive elements. I am not saying that LSD or marijuana are not destructive. They are destructive. But they are nothing compared to money or power. Whenever you are trying to fill your inner emptiness with anything, you are going against God. Because the inner emptiness is the face of God. When you stop stuffing yourself with food, money, power and things like these, then suddenly you become aware who you are. Sufis say that the first thing to be understood, experienced is nafs. And by understanding it, the process of dropping begins. It is not that you have to drop it. In simple terminology, nafs can be compared with ego, but nafs is an aspect of it. Just in seeing it, the process of dropping begins. Just to realize the fact and the absurdity and the neurosis of money, power, prestige and things like these, the 
dropping begins. Sufis have a beautiful name for it. They call it Tamba. Tamba means turning. Tamba means exactly what Jesus says when he says repent. The original root of the word comes from which the word repent comes has nothing to do with repentance. It means return to the source. Repent it comes from a root that means return to the source. Return. That is the meaning of the word repent. It has no idea of guilt in it, just return to your source. Sufis call this Tamba and Patanjali, the Hindu scientist, the scientist of the inner, calls it as Pratyahar, turning towards oneself. And Mahabir calls it Pratikarma, coming back home. It all mean the same, return, coming back, it is the same process. First understand the nature of nafs, desire, desire for more, that mad neurotic desire to have more and more. Understand this and in understanding tamba happens. Seeing the futility of it, you come back. Then you do not rush towards the horizon, you start moving towards yourself. There comes a 180 degree turn or an about turn and that is what Tamba is. You are going in a particular direction, you realize it is futility in, and that is the wrong direction of going into. You take 180 degree turn and you return. This process is known as Tamba. You had thought that money, power, prestige and things like these can give satiation in life so you are running behind these. Then one day all of a sudden something dawns and you realize that this is not what you really want in life. You take about turn. That is what Sufis call Tamba. Through this turning the third thing starts happening and Sufis call this as Hal. Hal means a state of being. But it is a temporary one. It is an altered state, a change state of being, a state of no mind. But it comes for a single moment, like flashes. For a single moment you are rooted in your being and again you are uprooted. That's why when Sufis have sessions like Sema, Kawali and the poet is singing, all of a sudden, someone gets a state of hal, a flash, an altered state. Psychology calls it altered state of consciousness and you begin, get up and begin to dance. These comes like flashes. For a single moment, you are rooted in your being and again you are uprooted. The poet sings a particular line. You understand the meaning. It touches you. All of a sudden, you are shaken within, you get up and start dancing. But Hal means a state of consciousness that comes to you because of any external reason, but it is temporary. In the beginning, it will happen only in a temporary, in a momentary way. Sometimes it will be there and other times it will not be. It will take, it will be like a ray of light in your darkness, like a light or a single star in the dark sky, the clouded sky. And sometimes you will be able to see it and other times it is not visible to you. This is called Hal. And in modern psychology we call it altered states of consciousness. In fact, this is the modern psychology calls it altered state of consciousness. Man is more interested in consciousness now than before. Nafs is interested in content. The content that you can fill your consciousness with, that is nafs. The content may be money or food or knowledge or something else. But nafs is always interested in content. After tamba, after the turning back, one becomes interested not in the content, 
but in consciousness itself. What is this inner emptiness that you want to feel? First see it, know it. First become acquainted with it. First have a real taste of it, have a bite of it and chew it and see whether it is something to be filled or something to be enjoyed. The moment you get a taste of it, then everything you have tasted before look worthless. This emptiness is fullness itself. This inner emptiness is the greatest joy. It is benediction. It is bliss. First, you will have halls, altered states of consciousness, something like a flash you will be enlightened, but then again it is gone. And you have fallen back into your misery, deeper than before. If you do not create a nafs for halls, there is a possibility that you may start hankering for more then you have fallen back. Then you have turned back again. Again you have created a horizon. Again the mind has come in and again there is desire in nature. Remember it, to many people halls happen. When hal happens, when you have a state, when you have a taste of that state, naturally you start desiring for more. You become very much desirous. A great longing comes. How to have it every day. And how to have it again and again, morning, evening, night. How to have it more. This is natural. I can understand this. It is so beautiful. It is such a benediction that one should like to have it again and again. But when you start expecting it, desiring it, you will miss even the, those altered states of halls, altered states of consciousness. Even those flash like lightning will disappear. Even those moments will not be there anymore because they can happen only when nafs is not there. All of a sudden, something happens like a flash lightning comes a moment of joy comes, enjoy it, but desire it no more. If you enjoy that altered state of consciousness and do not become desirous of it, you wait without desiring, you are totally aware and you wait patiently without demanding, it will come again and again and its frequency will become rampant. Then comes the fourth state when hal or altered state of consciousness becomes permanent. That is called magma. Magma means one has arrived. Then it is always there. Then it is not that it happens to you sometimes. Now you are it. From nafs to magma. This is the journey of a Sufi. The whole journey consists of experiment, experience, it is existential. You will have to go a little deeper into the details of the states of nafs because the more you are acquainted with it, the more there is a possibility of tamba or repent or turning back for conversion, for transformation, for repentance, for pratyaha and that great leap and the change of direction is possible then. There are three states of nafs. There are three kinds of sleepy people in the world. 